Flint and Allen here and this is Sketch and Tell. I love looking at these beautiful rainbow lorikeets, especially when I'm going for a walk early in the morning and I might see a whole mob of them up in a tree as they greet the, uh, the sunrise up or in and I stop because it's the colours that catch my eyes but it's also their joyous, raucous behaviour their antics um, as they swing around, jump around in the, on the branches. <clears throat> but I also, when I look at them a little bit more carefully, I notice that uh, like most parrots, they are in pairs. And lorikeets find another mate and they stay together for life. I don't know what they see in each other, whether there's differences in colours, whether there's difference in personality, but whatever it is, they make that choice and as I look at them, I watch them as they, uh, particularly in the afternoon, they're just uh, settling in after a day of feeding and flying around and there they are up in the tree all together and you can almost imagine them sort of talking to each other and asking, you know, how the day was. You see them preening each other's feathers you see them snuggling up to each other and even kissing each other on the beak. And as I look at that, I see in that a, a picture of, I guess, a search that we are all engaged in. And it's that search for love. It's that search for someone outside of ourselves whom we find special. Someone who we hope would find us special. Someone whom we can share our lives with. Someone that we can just share this, the normal stuff of life with us as well as the important things. Someone whom we can be honest with and they in turn with us. Someone who will understand us. Someone who will be there perhaps for life. We often call that person our search for our soulmate. Now my uh, journey into, uh, I guess, trying to find uh, this, uh, this someone else uh, began pretty late in life. Uh, others begin a lot early, but for me it began in year six. And I can remember clearly in the class there was this girl who just stood out amongst all others. And her name was Belinda, and she had beautiful, long, flowing curly blonde hair and she was the one who I really hoped would notice me but I was I was just an ordinary person in the classroom there was nothing special about me until one day I got a note and on the note it had written dear Linton I would like to sit with you in the music room cross cross Belinda now I knew that that was a genuine love note because in our classroom setup the teacher would make us sit in different positions but there was one period at the end of the week where we all went down to a demountable building for the music lesson and there the teacher was a little bit more relaxed and whoever we were standing next to we could go into the room and sit next to them for the duration of that music period and sure enough that Friday afternoon, Belinda was the one who was standing next to me and as we, as we went into the room, she was the one I was sitting next to and I was in heaven. I'd found that someone special who was <clears throat> seeing the same in me. And for that whole week, I just uh, was walking on cloud nine until the next Friday. And as we lined up, Where was Belinda? She was standing next to Derek. And to this day, I still don't know what happened. Did she just lose interest in me within a week? Was there some other scheme going on where she was trying to make Derek jealous and get Derek to ask her to uh, be with uh, him? I don't know. But I do know that it kind of hurt and I realized then that this journey 
that I was embarking on to find someone else special was not going to be easy to navigate. There was going to be some highs and lows. There was going to be moments where it was risky and there's going to be plenty of other times when I was going to be open up and I was going to be let down or hurt. As I've got older, I've actually come to realise that our search for our soulmate is also very much shaped by what we view on media and uh, what we view at the, at the movies. In fact, there's like a, almost a Hollywood template to how it's meant to play out. And I used to play it out in my mind. I used to use my imagination, which was pretty, pretty weird, uh, but I'd see myself walking along the beach at sunset and there'd be this uh, other person walking the opposite way and this girl would come close and she would just be the person of my dreams. Our eyes would lock and we would instantly know that we were meant for each other. And of course there'd be music in the background and we'd live happily ever after, forever. It never played out that way. But nonetheless, I do think that we tend to place incredibly high expectations on that other person whom we, we are trying to, I guess, share our life with, whoever it is. And we really do desire and expect them to meet all our needs. That's how it's meant to be. They're meant to understand us fully. They're meant to be there for us always, to complete us, to be our true soulmate. Now I'm sure that uh, we perhaps have uh, read or met people whom that just seems to, to work and I, I don't begrudge them that at all. But I do know that there are many who are still on that journey and on that search. And I'd like to suggest, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, there is a source of true love. In fact, I would say that this source is the center of this amazing cosmic world that we, universe that we find ourselves in. And I would say that this source is God. Whatever your understanding God is, I think love is central. And it was love that birthed this world, this universe. It's love that created all the amazing things that we see in this world. It is love that holds it together. It is love that provides all of the good things that we enjoy and often take for granted. And to me, the source of that love, when we experience it in, in multiple ways, you trace it back to the source, and it is God, who shares freely with all of us. God is the wellspring of true, genuine love. And this love is constantly reaching out to us. This love does not give up on us. This love is patient. This love is kind. This love does not hold anything against us. This love enjoys you as you are. This love is a love that will never end and never let you down. And when you respond to that love, and when you know it deep down, and it's very personal, it actually transforms you from the inside out. And it changes you the way that you see yourself and you start to find a freedom in being who you really are meant to be, instead of trying to be someone else to impress others. It's a love that brings out the best in you and helps you to become all that you're meant to be in God's, in God's way. And it's a love that's overflowing so that you can actually be a giver in any kind of relationship. Instead of trying to take from others, you can just keep giving, you can forgive, you can heal because there's so much there that's flowing through you. May you have success in your journey, but wherever it takes you, know that the true source is God. 
and have a colourful day.